Hello, today we're going to be looking at uh, open response question number four from Form A of the 2005 Advanced Placement Statistics Test. Uh, you'll have to bear with me uh, and excuse some of the sloppiness. I'm trying out a whole new suite of recording options. Uh, I just got a new computer, so I'm trying to use uh, Smooth Draw 4 now, Camtasia. 8.2. I've got a headset with a mic on it and a, and a tablet, a bamboo tablet, and I'm not really used to recording with all of this stuff, but I'm hoping that in the future it'll allow me to make some really great videos. But these first few are probably going to be pretty rough, so just bear with me. So the interesting part about today's problem is that we're going to construct an answer using all of our knowledge of sampling distributions, and about when normal distributions approximate binomial distributions and all the good stuff sort of in chapters 17 and 18 of box book. Now this is a question on hypothesis testing. I mean I guess technically we would be doing a one proportion z test uh, but we haven't learned some of the detailed language about hypothesis testing, but we've talked informally about a lot of the ideas. So I'm going to make two videos. I'm, I'm going to answer this sort of in the context of what we know so far before our midterm exam, and then I'm going to make another video in which I use some of the more detailed language involving hypothesis tests. But in both cases, we'll come to the same conclusion. So basically, let's talk about the problem. So for this problem, uh, there's this company that is claiming that it places vouchers in 20% of its cereal boxes. So the company is making a claim that the parameter, the number that describes the population of cereal boxes, uh, that the parameter is 0.2. The p equals 0.2. Uh, and we're sort of seeing here that we're going to take a random sample of cereal boxes and see if we have enough evidence uh, to dispute the company's claim. So what we do is we grab uh, a random sample of 55 cereal boxes and it turns out that 11 of those 65 boxes uh, and 11 over 65 is less than 0.2 uh, but is that enough sort of so that we can confidently dispute the company's claim? So let's launch right into this. I mean we want to use sort of our knowledge about the sampling distribution here, the distribution of all p-hats uh, for sample sizes of, of 65. So first we've got to sort of check our conditions here. So here, here are the conditions. Now notice you're not just like listing them out and putting a check mark, you're actually showing math where appropriate, like in this first one. You're not just saying np is greater than or equal to 10 and nq is greater than or equal to 10, you're actually sort of substituting in your values, checking that out. Uh, that's sort of our success-fail condition, condition one. And then we want to be taking a large enough random sample. That's sort of what we're checking in the success-fail condition, but, but not too large. So in condition two, remember, uh, we want to make sure that 10 times our sample is less than the total population. So in this case, uh, I guess it's reasonable to assume that there's more than 650 cereal boxes in the population of all the cereal boxes that this company makes. And then for number three, this, this actually might be the most important condition, we need to be doing a random sample. So we need to be choosing our 65 cereal boxes in an unbiased manner. So the problem says that we're randomly choosing our 65 cereal boxes, and then also uh, the, the observations need to be independently selected of each other. But if we're doing a random sample, then that's, that's reasonable to assume that the observations are independent of each other because if we pick one serial box at random and we're actually doing the selecting randomly then that should have no impact on the next serial box that gets selected. So there's our conditions. We want to make sure we write down those uh, in a clear and concise manner. And then we want to actually start you know, doing some math. We should probably say what p hat is in this case. Define our random, define our uh, what our sample proportion is here. So it's the proportion of cereal boxes with vouchers out of our 65 uh, randomly selected boxes. And then we should probably talk about what is the distribution of all of the possible p hats look like? What are sort of the properties of the sampling distribution? Well, the sampling distribution is going to be approximately normal. The mean's going to be centered at, uh, the mean is going to be 0.2. That's what the company is claiming. That's what we're assuming the mean is. And the standard deviation will be 
p times 1 minus p over n, the square root of all of that. So 0.2 times 0.8 over 65, the square root of all of that. So you should probably make note of you know what p hat is in this case, define that explicitly within the context of the problem, and then also talk about sort of the key features of the sampling distribution, that it's normal and what the mean and the standard deviation are. So again, excuse the writing is terribly sloppy. I'm really just getting used to this bamboo stylus. I have a very difficult time writing on the stylus, so hopefully that will get better in the future. And then we want to do our mechanics or our math. So notice I'm making just a little sketch of the shape of the sampling distribution there. Point 0.2 is in the center. There's our 11 out of 65 serial boxes, and we're looking for, under the assumption that P is 0.2, what is the probability that a, in a random sample of 65 serial boxes, we would have 11 or fewer vouchers. So I've shaded that appropriate area under the curve. And so make sure you got a probability statement, probably that P hat's less than or equal to 11 out of 65. I also wrote the corresponding probability statement in terms of Z scores, the probability that Z is less than or equal to negative 0.62. Uh, I got the 0.2676 by doing normal CDF, uh, negative infinity, comma, negative 0.62 on my TI-83. Remember, I don't need to show work uh, for that. The picture sort of suffices as work for that, for that answer. I've also written down the appropriate uh, Z-score formula here. Remember, it's statistic, which in this case is P hat, minus our assumed parameter, P over the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of all the p hats, which is p times 1 minus p over n, the square root of all of that. I substituted in all the values, got my z-score, and then I sort of want to interpret all of these results. I want to interpret the mechanics. So basically what's going on here is that under the assumption that the company is, is correct, that 20% of their serial boxes do contain vouchers, we would expect in a in random samples of size 65 to get 11 vouchers or less about 26.76 percent of the time now that's not that unlikely so basically what this is saying is that i mean was our result really that unusual assuming that the company is telling the truth not not really so what this is what this p value what this 27% approximately, this, this p-value right here, what that is telling me is that that's the percentage of time that we would see the results that we got, or something more extreme, under the assumption that the parameter in this case is what the company is claiming that it is. So that's not a really low probability, so we do not have sufficient evidence to, to reject the company's claim. We do not have sufficient evidence to say that uh, that p is probably less than 0.2, so then we just want to recap that in a sentence. So here's my sentence. I said, since about 26.76% of the time we would see 11 or fewer vouchers in a random sample of 65 boxes, assuming that p equals 0.2, we cannot conclude that the proportion of boxes that contain vouchers is less than 0.2. I also could have said, like after the, after the comma there, I could have said, or I could have started a new sentence and said like, Thus, we do not have enough evidence to reject the company's claim that 20% of their boxes contain vouchers. So there is that problem. I hope this video was helpful. And again, I'm trying to, you know, get this handwriting under control and the usage of the software. So just bear with me and hopefully the videos will get a little bit uh, even more professional looking in the future. Thanks.